It's Wednesday, July 1. This is the news on PBCJ. I'm Carol Francis. Prime Minister Andrew Holness hosted a digital press conference at Jamaica House on Wednesday morning. We have the highlights. An analysis of the situation in the Greenwich Town area has revealed that the community continues to be characterized by increased gang-related violence and criminal activities as the gangs compete for area dominance and overall the intervention in the space will be geared at the urgent need to save lives and setting the conditions for and the delivery of effective social interventions to reduce social vulnerability to violence and crime. Earlier this morning, the Jamaica Defense Force and the Jamaica Constabulary Force deployed to sections of the community to begin preparation for this declaration. And we are we're operating along the following boundaries. To the west, beginning at the intersection of Marcus Garvey Drive and 3rd Avenue, the boundary extends in a northeasterly direction along 3rd Avenue and then southeasterly along the train line, continuing northeasterly parallel to West Avenue then to the east of Greenwich All Aid School to Spanish Town Road. To the north, it continues southeasterly along Spanish Town Road to the shared parish boundaries of Kingston and St. Andrew in the vicinity of the intersection of Spanish Town Road and Maxfield Avenue. To the east, it continues from the vicinity of the intersection of Spanish Town Road and Maxfield Avenue in a southwesterly direction along the shared parish boundary of Kingston and St. Andrew down to Marcus Garvey Drive. And to the south, the boundary extends from the intersection of the shared parish boundary I mentioned before and Marcus Garvey Drive in a northwesterly direction along Marcus Garvey Drive to the starting point at the intersection with 3rd Avenue. Jamaica has recorded four new confirmed COVID-19 cases while recoveries remain at 553. The new positives, which brings to 702, the total number of COVID-19 cases on the island consists of two males and two females who range in age from 25 to 43 years. All are imported cases, having arrived on flights from the United States. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jacqueline Bisesa McKenzie says the fight against the coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak is not over. She wants Jamaicans to remain vigilant despite the relaxation of some of the measures by the government. We have more in this report. The CMO told a recent JIS think tank that in her experience with the management of infections, many persons become desensitized over time and this leads to a level of complacency. The big message is that the outbreak is not over. Okay, a lot of people are thinking that because maybe we have relaxed some of the restrictions that the outbreak is over, I can now go to the beach, I can now go um, to the supermarket, but the outbreak is not over, all right? What it is, is that we have to recognize, as we've said before, that there are persons who will have symptoms and there are persons who will not have symptoms. And there is the possibility of transmission in both cases. The CMO pointed out that analysis has shown that it is the symptomatic cases that are driving the infection. She warns that persons may be treating symptoms with medication and effectively hiding the fact that they are carrying the virus. The most common symptoms of COVID-19 includes fever, dry cough and tiredness. Persons can also experience difficulty breathing or shortness of breath chest pain or pressure, or loss of speech and movement. You don't know if somebody in the line at the bank with you have COVID. You don't know if they were infectious outside the building. You, do, you just don't know. So, um, I mean, if they were symptomatic outside of the building and they're not coughing now, you don't know if they've taken an antihistamine to stop the sore throat or so, some Panadol to stop the fever. You just don't know. So you have to protect yourself. And if you can't maintain physical distancing, you must wear a mask. You must wear a mask to protect yourself from getting exposed. 
The CMO urges that since persons will not always know who has it, they must protect themselves against exposure by maintaining physical distancing and wearing a mask. There are many persons who may be asymptomatic in the country that have, there's a possibility of exposure. So everybody has to do their best to, to adhere to all the inf infection prevention and control measures. Wear a mask when you're in a crowded area, especially if you're one of those vulnerable persons, persons over 60, um, persons who have infection diseases or other infections that can cause their immunity not to be so good as other persons persons with chronic illnesses especially if you have two or more more comorbid illnesses then you must protect yourself you must wear a mask these include wearing masks when out in public especially in crowded areas extreme vigilance for vulnerable persons which include persons over 60 years persons who have diseases or other infections that can compromise their immune systems, and persons with chronic illnesses, especially if they have two or more comorbid illnesses. Simone Absalom for the news on PBCJ. Superintendent of Police Leon Clunis, who was injured in a shootout with gunmen in Horizon Park St. Catherine, has died. Superintendent Clunis was in good spirits on Monday when his health reportedly deteriorated on Tuesday. In his sectoral presentation, which he dedicated to the hard-working, devoted and uncompromising members of Jamaica's security forces, Minister of National Security Dr. Horace Chang paused to give his condolences to the family and friends of Superintendent Clunis. Uh, before proceeding, if there's some sadness, I must indicate to the host that Superintendent Clunis, a uh, brave fan of the who was injured last week, passed this evening. Right. We got, hmm? not, not long ago, I, I got the news at the beginning, but I think it's you now public knowledge. I will come in and then. He was a good man, a fine officer. He was doing very well, but it would seem he got an emotus because. In that tragic extent, we have lost three very fine Jamaicans in the incident. People's National Party Shadow Minister of National Security Fitz Jackson also expressed condolences to Superintendent Clunis' family. During the minister's presentation, he made mention of the sudden passing of Superintendent Clooney, who, were one, who was one of the four injured, well, two deceased and Four officers got shot on June 12th at the Rising Park. I want to use this opportunity to tender our sympathies, our condolences to his family and to his colleagues on his untimely passing. Mr. Speaker, it is indeed a shock because I think all of us were of the feeling that he was recovering quite well and this was the last thing that we would have expected. Submissions related to the application seeking leave to take the cases of Adija Palmer, popularly known as Vibes Cartel, and his three co-convicts to the UK Privy Council are expected to wrap today, July 1. The second day of hearing in the Court of Appeal was by video link. One of the attorneys representing Sean Campbell, Bianca Samuel, says the proceedings concerned a number of directions which were given by the trial judge, including whether or not the directions constituted a fair trial. The director of public prosecutions will make submissions after the defense. Vibes Cartel with Sean Campbell, Cahedra Jones and Andre St. John are serving mandatory life sentences for the murder of Clive Lizard Williams. The Integrity Commission has submitted two reports on its investigation into alleged corruption at the state-owned oil refinery Petrojam. The Commission's report was anticipated since a 2018 audit of the refinery painted a picture of mismanagement at the entity. The Integrity Commission noted that the reports were submitted to the Speaker of the House and the President of the Senate for tabling. One of the documents is a special report into irregularities at Petrojam. The other relates to donations made by Petrodam between April 2016 and March 2018. Former Energy Minister Dr. Andrew Wheatley, former Petrodam Chairman Dr. Percival Bahadur Singh, former General Manager Floyd Grinley, and Procurement Unit Head 
Ranique Budram Ford are among those cited in the documents. Today, July 1 is recognized globally as International Reggae Day. The day seeks to highlight and celebrate the best of Jamaica's music and its impact on music culture worldwide. More from Marlon Samuels. International Reggae Day 2020 is being celebrated under the theme from jam rock to hip hop. It's 24 hours of celebration of reggae and its influence on music. The event, which has a global media reach, will be virtual. It features online performances, DJ sets, panels, and media specials from around the world. In keeping with its theme, 11 Game Changers whose creativity has impacted the growth and global appeal of the music will be honored. Those who will be recognized include Bounty Killer, Beanie Man, Damian Marley, Buster Rhymes, Heavy D, Biggie Smalls, Supercat, Shined, The Fugees and Sandy Pepper Denton of the hip-hop group Salt and Pepper. For the news on PBCJ, I'm Marlon Samuels. For the day's breaking company, financial and economic news, we join Gabriel Thompson in the business report. In Tuesday's trading session, the JSE combined index advanced by 7,409 points to close at under 400,000 units. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 82 stocks, of which 39 advanced, 30 declined and 13 traded firm. The junior market index advanced by 24 points to close at under 3,000 units. Stocks advanced for 138 Student Living Jamaica, Access Financial Services, and AMG Packaging and Paper. Stocks declined for 1834 Investments Limited, Cargo Handlers Limited, and Caribbean Assurance Brokers Limited. Trading firm were Caribbean Cream Limited, Derriman Trading Company Preference Shares, and Dolphin Cove Limited. Mayberry Jamaican Equities Limited was the volume leader with just over 50 million units, followed by Pulse Investments Limited with 10.3 million units and Trans Jamaican Highway Limited with 7.1 million units. Now for the foreign exchange. The US dollar on Tuesday, June 30 ended trading at $140.01. The Canadian dollar sold for an average $105.16. The pound sterling traded for $177.16 and the euro ended trading at $163.83. Oil prices slipped on Tuesday as investors worried that rising COVID-19 cases would hurt demand while supply could rise with a potential resurgence of Libyan oil production, which has slowed to a trickle since the start of the year. Brent crude futures settled 58 cents to $41.27 a barrel. West Texas intermediate crude futures fell 56 cents to $41.15 a barrel. West Texas intermediate crude futures fell 56 cents to $41.15 a barrel. And that's it for the business report on PBCJ. I'm Gabrielle Thompson. As the weather changes and climatic events like the Saharan dust, cold fronts and heat waves become more frequent, some people will experience new and increased allergic reactions to elements in the air. Dr. Che Bowen tells us about them and how they can be treated in today's Living Healthy Report. The most common allergic conditions in Jamaica at the top of the list would be asthma, followed closely by allergic rhinitis, your sinusitis, and allergic dermatitis. That's another very common, which is more or less eczema. So you have an allergic response that triggers a rash on your skin. Those are the most common allergic responses in Jamaica. What is rhinitis? It's a, it's a common confusion that sinusitis is rhinitis 
but it's not sinusitis is an infection of your sinus, your, your nasal sinus, your maxillary sinus, this area here. And in terms of allergic rhinitis, you get similar symptoms. It's not an infection, however, it's more of an inflammation triggered off by an allergic response. So you do get the same runny nose, the nasal congestion, the trouble breathing, the post nasal drip, the clearing of your throat, but you don't have that infective aspect on board and you don't need to be treated with antibiotics to control allergic rhinitis. So that's the main condition. What it is, is an allergic inflammation in your sinus cavity. Signs and symptoms include a runny or stuffy nose, sneezing, red, itchy and watery eyes, and swelling around the eyes. Did you know that pollen, mold and insect stings are common allergy culprits during the summer months? But fresh produce such as celery, apples and melons can also cause allergy symptoms. This is known as food pollen syndrome. Cross-reacting allergens found in both pollen and raw fruits, vegetables and some tree nuts. Acne breakouts, dry irritated skin, heat rash are just some of the dermatological issues faced by some people in the summer due to the climate related elements listed before. And there's more. Correct. So eczema, which is another name for dermatitis. There are two forms. There could be contact, there could be allergic. And contact means that something touches it and triggers it off. Allergic means you could have ate something, some sort of allergen caused this rash to trigger off. And what it would leave you with is a rash either on, well, on anywhere on your skin, to be honest. And it would be itching, it would be red. It may or may not be painful. And the more you scratch it is the more the rash would spread. And that is something that can be easily treated and managed using steroid cream and antihistamines. I feel itchy just hearing about these skin conditions. The good thing is there are effective treatments. So again, MD Link is a telemedicine company that allows you to see the doctor online, on your phone, on your computer and get treated online. And in fact, allergies are one of our top treated conditions on the MD-Link platform. So something like allergic rhinitis, sinusitis, your dermatitis, your rash, that's perfect for the MD-Link platform. You come on, you let us know your symptoms, and we can treat you easily, prescribe what you need to get to control your allergies. You can show us your rash. We have a look and decide on the strength of the ointment that we need to prescribe for your rash and the tablets we may, we may need to prescribe. But definitely MD-Link Telemedicine is a perfect utility for treating allergies, sinusitis, and dermatitis, eczema. In regional news, the 120-year-old border dispute between Guyana and Venezuela went to the International Court of Justice on Tuesday. Gordon Mosley of News Source Guyana has the details. It was a big day today for Guyana before the International Court of Justice. As that Guyana versus Venezuela border case came up, Guyana's co-agent and head of the legal team in the border case against Venezuela, Sir Sridhar Ramphal, opened Guyana's arguments before the International Court on the issue of the court having jurisdiction to hear the matter. Venezuela, which has been maintaining that the International Court does not have jurisdiction, stayed away from the hearing. It has submitted documents to support its position while not appearing before the court. In his opening remarks Sir Shridat said Venezuela's participation could have been helpful. It is unfortunate that Venezuela has chosen not to participate in these hearings. Undoubtedly it would have been more helpful to the court for both parties to appear, to fully present their arguments in the first round and respond to each other in the second. But at least the court has not been left to speculate as to what Venezuela might have said had it appeared in this great hall of justice. 
Sir Shridat told the court that Guyana's case under court having jurisdiction is based on the plain text of the 1966 Geneva Agreement, by which the parties consented to accept the decision of the UN Secretary General on the means of settlement of their dispute over the validity of the 1899 arbitral award. He said that included judicial settlement by the International Court of Justice, and that the dispute is settled by the ICJ once it is the means for settlement chosen by the Secretary General of the United Nations. According to Sir Shridat, Venezuela's contention that the court lacks jurisdiction is without any foundation. Almost 60 years of Venezuela trying and failing to despoil the sanctity of the Treaty of Washington and to nullify the Paris Award. The Secretary General of the United Nations indicated to the presidents of Guyana and Venezuela in these words, and I quote, I have fulfilled the responsibility that has fallen on me within the framework set by my predecessor. And significant progress not having been made toward arriving at a full agreement for the solution of the controversy, I have chosen the International Court of Justice as the means that is now to be used for its solution. That is why we are here, attended by the faith of the people of Guyana in this International Court of Justice and in the rule of law internationally. Once the court agrees with Guyana and establishes that it has jurisdiction, it will proceed to hear the actual case. Guyana is seeking to obtain a final and binding judgment from the court that the 1899 Arbitral Award, which established the location of the land boundary between then British Guyana and Venezuela, remains valid and binding, and that Guyana's executable region belongs to Guyana and not Venezuela. Under the UN Charter and the court's own rules, its final judgments, both in jurisdiction and the merits, will be legally binding binding on Guyana and Venezuela, whether or not Venezuela participates in the proceedings. Protests have erupted across sections of Trinidad and Tobago. Residents of Beetham Highway, Sealots, Laventil and East Port of Spain are angry over the killing of three men by police on the weekend. We get more from Sherilyn Lewis. The first protest on Tuesday started around 9 a.m. at the NP flyover. 20 minutes later, another protest in Coconut Drive Mova. Then at quarter to 10, residents of Silots followed suit, blocking the roads, burning debris as they guarded to voice their anger. There all are we! It's Coconut! Gary Griffith, Silot! This resident said they are fed up of being targeted by the police. Black Lives Matter to everybody, boy! The protesting in America and the killing we hear in Trinidad! The protest, oh, everybody vex what happening with what happened in America, you understand? Why we can't protest? They kill three innocent men. Three innocent men, or they kill for nothing. Because what? Or they driving in a car? They said they don't want more than four people in a car. It's three in a car. They still stop the car and kill people. Why is that? Simultaneously in Beef and Gardens, residents blocked the highway and Eastern Main Road, causing major traffic gridlock. <laughs> The scene then escalated when the protesters became disruptive and police had to use some force to disperse the gathering. Closer to noon, protest mushroomed to Henry Street, Nelson and Prince Streets, 6th and 7th Avenue Barataria, and Maloney Gardens in the east of Trinidad. However, with an intensified police presence, the gatherings were squashed. For many motorists, the commute to and from the capital city was stressful, but shortly after 1 p.m., the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service reported that all roads leading in and out of Port of Spain were cleared and now are debris-free. The update also reassured that police officers are on the ground, ensuring the safety of commuters entering and leaving Port of Spain. Charlene Lewis, TTT News. 
One woman was allegedly shot and killed by police in Beetham Gardens as the protests became heated and sparked another round of action by residents on Tuesday. TTT News reporter Ian Watson was on hand and filed this report. A fresh round of protests at the Beetham Mall. I'm actually on the bus route. Beetham residents are protesting yet another police killing. They say a young lady, just about 32 years of age, was shot when the police shot indiscriminately at a crowd that was protesting earlier this morning. They have just got reports that the girl had died at the, General at the Port of Spain General Hospital and they are protesting once more. Cell phone video footage showing the police officer firing his weapon. Onella Graves, who was shot, was taken into a vehicle and to the hospital where she later died. Upon hearing of her death, the protests reignited, the fire starting in the full view of the police. Residents with their hands up, a symbolic reference to the men who were killed by the police over the weekend. This is not right. Understand why I tell you, I talk on the behalf of all of us, we black people. And the whole protest is that police killing people with no reason, with no remorse, and nothing not coming out of it. A senior police officer gave a listening ear to the residents as he sought to bring some calm. Onilla Graves was 32 and a mother of five. Residents said at the time of her death, she was expecting her sixth child. Ian Wason, TTT News. In the meantime, Trinidad's National Security Minister Stuart Young says the protests were pre-planned and allege the demonstrators are being paid. More in this report from Crystal Wilson. That these obviously orchestrated attempts that are now spreading are just that. The information that has come to hand is that these are being orchestrated. Persons on the ground have personally contacted me to say money is being paid to persons to go out and to create disturbance. The words of National Security Minister Stuart Young on Tuesday in response to violent demonstrations in North Trinidad. The riots came on the heels of the shooting deaths of three men who were killed in Morva by members of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service last weekend. At the press conference, Minister Young denounced the violent activity and said this type of behavior was not what's expected of law-abiding citizens. He said there were people who were being paid for their involvement and the payments were made by an unspecified party. On who is behind the stirring up of the criminal elements, when we're getting reports from the ground of people being paid to go and dis create disturbance, who is it that are paying people? Who is it that stands to gain by disrupting the peace and quiet of our city of Port of Spain? The National Security Minister urged members of the public not to panic and said full protection is being provided for law-abiding citizens. The Defence Force are going to provide full support to the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service and we are going to protect all of our law-abiding citizens regardless of where you are. Minister Young acknowledged that emotions were high at the time, but assured that the matters were being investigated by both the Police Complaints Authority and the TTPS. He also confirmed that political leader of the new national vision, Fuad Abubakar, was arrested for his involvement in Tuesday's protests in Port of Spain. Crystal Wilson, TTT News. In sports, high school sports competitions are set to resume by mid-October, subject to approval from the government. The Inter-Secondary Schools Sports Association, ISA, has reportedly approved the plans. ISA has indicated its intention to resume the popular Da Costa Cup and Manning Cup competitions starting October 31, three weeks after the proposed start of the Under-16 football competition. The release also noted that the boys' Under-16 football competition would start in mid-October, the same time as basketball and netball competitions are slated to begin. ISA has reportedly been doing a series of consultations seeking to set out guidelines under which they can safely resume competitions, including those that involve physical contact. All sporting activities were stopped due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And that's our package. Join us again tomorrow, same time, same place, for more news and sports right here on PBCJ, the People's Station.